China. China seems to be flexing its muscle. Apparently they have a new weapon. And uh, it's not just any weapon. This is a bomb. And uh, apparently among the most powerful non-nuclear weapons that they have ever displayed. What's interesting about this story is that when we talk about uh, China, it's not usually a country that uh, does public displays of bluster like this. So we decided we wanted to look uh, at this a little bit more. We want to find out more about this. RT correspondent Sarah Montes de Oca is joining me now uh, to uh, bring us the latest. She's been drilling down on this throughout the day. Sarah, let me start with the, this, this weapon itself. What, what, what is it? So, Rick, China's arm industry giant uh, Ner Norinco showcased this bomb for the first time. It's a Chinese version of the mother of all bombs. Mm -hmm. Now, the bomb whose strength is only a second to that of a nuclear weapon was dropped by a Chinese H-6K bomber. Now, the bomb, it was dropped, we can see on screen right now, it was mm -hmm. dropped in an unspecified location. We know it caused a gigantic explosion with fire and smoke, very heavy. To put this into perspective, back in 2017, Trump who um, also dubbed the mother of all bombs, uh, mm -hmm. dropped that bomb in Afghanistan. If you remember East Afghanistan, this was back in 2017. But Beijing-based military analyst Wei Dongshu said that the Chinese bomb is calculated to be five to six meters long and weighs a lot less than that of the American bomb. Mm. So to really, he said, quote, the massive blast can easily and completely wipe out fortified ground targets such as reinforced buildings, bastions and defense shelters. Now the American version requires a cargo plane to drop this kind of bomb. Mm -hmm. So this this just to put it into perspective as far as the weight, while the Chinese can drop this bomb off of their normal uh, carrier aircraft. Sounds like quite a weapon and I'm sure if they fired it, even if they did not disclose their location, uh, given, given our intel apparatus in this country, we know exactly what it is. We know exactly where it was done, and so do the Russians, and so does every, uh, so do the Brits, uh, and so do the Israelis. But I want to ask you this: uh, you know, when I think of Russia, and I think I mentioned this a little while ago, you don't think of them publicly displaying their wares like this. What's what's going on? Why are they doing this? Well, you may not think of China having done this before, but. In November, they had an international air show expo where they really flexed a lot of military power. Mm -hmm. They specifically did it with their weapons, this new LW-30 specific laser weapon that they want into uh, to buy or to sell these products into the international arms market. So they want to take part of this, and mm -hmm. they're building up the technology to be able to do so. I mean, somebody, an observer of, of advanced, wep advanced weaponry, told China that every military power in the world has been striving to develop these laser weapons. And this LW-30, for example, which they showed, has a precision to do something like that. And you could see why the Chinese are very excited and think that these will fly off the shelves if they are put into the arms market. Well, I would be remiss if I don't ask you about the fact that there might be a tie-in, or it, let me ask it this way. Is, is there a possible tie to this and the trade war going on with Mr. Trump? Well, it seems to be pretty timely, right? <laughs> I mean, right. Re perfect timing for this. There, you know, Pentagon is now urging America's Pacific allies to increase presence in the South China Sea. So the experts are warning that we could be heading into a military war, actual full-on war but mm -hmm. with China. But it's interesting because next week, and we just heard today, that the U.S. and China are scheduled to be able to continue these talks, these trade talks. Mm. But, I mean, there's a lot that goes into the trade talks, like intellectual property theft and certain things that haven't not yet been addressed by China that the Trump administration is pushing for. And they haven't talked since the G20 summit, so this will be the first since that temporary 90-day truce. Sarah Montes de Oca, as usual, good job. Thank you so much Thank for bringing you. us that report. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.